Hey guys, Tom Trams, Linux MCE. It's been a very, very long but very productive weekend. I now have the Orbiter running on the Joggler. Now what's distinctive about this is that the components that were used to take and build the Orbiter for this particular device will constitute a new version of Pad Orbiter, which I will release as soon as I get all the pieces polished. This is a new version of Pad Orbiter that is based on MIGO Core and MIGO components, but using the existing Orbiter software. So in essence, this is Pad Orbiter 1.5 or 2.0, whatever you want to call it. But um, to first uh, demonstrate the pos to, to demonstrate it, I basically ported this to the O2 uh, the O2 Joggler, which I'll demonstrate right now. Now, um, if we actually look at the Joggler. It's a pretty unassuming piece of hardware. It looks like a tablet, but uh, in reality it's, it's not. It actually sits on a base uh, and is designed kind of like a digital picture frame or a clock radio, however you want to put it. Now, its size actually makes it nice and convenient to place on a nightstand. And it looks really good taken and placed like in this configuration. It has a nice size and it has nice visibility and uh, etc. Now, it's worth to note right now that since I am developing this, and it's in development right now, I am currently uh, storing the pad orbiter itself on a bootable USB stick, which overrides the existing Joggler OS that's on it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the Joggler so that you can see this thing booting up. The boot up is not quite where I would like it to be. For example, there's about 10 or 15 seconds that are wasted just getting the USB to initialize. Uh, once this is copied to the uh, once this is copied to the internal MMC memory, this will go away. But I'll plug it in. Right now, it uses EFI as its boot up firmware, and right now it has the O2 logo embedded in the EFI boot up firmware. Uh, I will try to change this as well. I know how. I just need to do. I just need the time. Once the uh, EFI finishes its initialization, it boots up Linux. And since I do not have a splash screen for the Linux kernel right now, you will see all the debugging information. Now, notice up here on the two on the two sections, there's two there's two cores here. Uh, this is indeed a very fast little CPU. It's a Z520 with two cores on it, which actually makes it quite fantastic. With, really extremely responsive and you'll notice right now it's stuck uh, it's sitting here trying to initialize the USB stick and a few of the uh, you'll notice that that time jump from six seconds to 24 seconds this will uh, increase dramatically once the system's up and running now it takes boots the rest of the system goes into X and for a moment you see the wireless connection applet here as it takes and configures itself with the current wireless interface. It connects to my home network and once it's ready, then Orbiter takes over. And now Orbiter is actually up and running. Now notice how quickly Orbiter actually came up. Yes it is that fast. And if I actually take and use it from this point on, you'll see that it's actually extremely fast. Uh, scrolling and uh, moving between different things is very quickly, very quick. Moving up, moving down, but also notice there's no artifacting, there's no yellowing happening. This is quite fantastic. But you'll notice that it is exceptionally responsive. Going into the playlist and data grids, I'll pick a uh, different. Now the touchscreen is calibrated a little weird on the bottom, near the bottom on mine, so it can be kind of a slight challenge to hit the button here. But once you do, it comes up and is quite nice. Notice all the screens are very quick and ooh, I need to change that. I need to take that playlist out, don't I? Well, okay, I'll do this again, no problem. I'll pick something else. Like Babylon 5 is cool. So take hit it. Lights go off. And you'll see my playlist. Of course, turn up the lights a little bit. All the signs point to death by natural causes. And you can see my TV. Now you can see the responsiveness. I tap the play. Tap it again. I'll know more after we do an autopsy. Responsiveness is pretty good. 
and all in all, um, it's a very, uh, it's a very, very well designed orbiter, and it's perfect for dealing with, uh, for dealing with things right near the bed, uh, and especially useful for things like the sleeping menu, so you can have your alarms, uh, your alarm scenarios, etc., etc. It also does exceptionally well for screens that have uh, keypads, such as the security panel. So, as you can see, blazingly fast, extremely responsive. So, more to come soon. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this. I still have to take and fix a few things. Uh, for one, I need to integrate the virtual keyboard a bit better so that it's easier to take and enter in your wireless access point information. And I want to take and tidy up the boot process a bit more to make it faster and uh, make it so that it's possible to install this onto uh, the, uh, onto the uh, target hardware much easier. Well, until next time, I'll give you a, a bigger progress report once I have one. But until then, uh, see you guys later. Bye.